Fuck the war. Hello everybody, my name is Wolfric and welcome to a new series on this war of mine. Now, this game has been out for a little while. If you're not familiar with it, it's based around the concept of a modern day siege of a city in a time of war. Particularly, it's based on the events of Sarajevo from the 1990s. Um, one of the developers, Emir uh, Seremovic, was actually... Uh, he grew up in that city during that time of war and so this is the developers way of trying to bring attention to parts of war that people don't necessarily always think of that it's not just soldiers fighting and dying but there's also innocent lives um, that suffer during these kind of things and so it was created by the studio called 11-bit in conjunction with a charity called War Child UK, who um, try to help children trapped in these uh, war zones and everything. And it's a very compelling game, it's a beautiful game, I'm, I, I love it, it's great. I think that the artwork is fantastic, the music is beautiful, and the story itself is really compelling. You find yourself trying to make decisions where, at the time, it doesn't seem like there's any good option but you have to try and make the best decision for you and your people to survive. You take on the role of a group of survivors. Um, I've, most of the time it seems to be about three survivors, but I have seen one or two occasions where you start with four or even five. But generally you start with four. I haven't played it in a couple of weeks, actually. Actually, a couple of months. So I've, I'm happy to come back to it. And it's actually got a bit of a boost in popularity at the minute because the first DLC for the game has just come out. Um, it's basically adding artwork into the game. The developers grouped up with a load of artists who wanted to really kind of try and make an additional statement about war and all the rest of it. Um, just reading an extract here. The compositions represent reflections on the human condition and the state of humanity during a time of war. So that, that's the kind of thing that they're trying to get for. They're trying to show that kind of mindset. A um, couple of the artist names there is M City, Gabriel Spector Reese, C Creative, Emir Seremovic, who is one of the developers of the game, Faux Real, and I'm going to butcher this name, I can already feel it, Mateusz Voluj, which I believe is Polish, and I probably completely destroyed that name, so my apologies. Um, there are three tiers to the DLC. They've, it's the, you get the same content either way, but there are three options on Steam. You can go for 79p, £6.99, or £14.99, which incidentally is the same price of the base game. This War of Mine is £14.99, available on Steam if you want to, pl if you want to play it yourself. Um, so you just donate whichever you feel more comfortable donating, and you get the same DLC either way. Um, so let's get straight into it. Um, obviously I'm not uh, yeah, I'm not going to continue, I'm going to go for another try. And so this is new, I've not seen this before, it's, um, it's choose your story and I, I don't understand this, I guess you choose the survivor that you definitely want to have in your group, in which case I'm going to go with Pavel, because Pavel and Bruno tend to come up together and they're quite good. Boris I've never actually even played a game with before. I know that he's quite a strong person. And Arika, Arika, I, I don't know how you say that. Um, but, oh, 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 wait, I see. The names at the bottom of the Polaroid tell you who you will have. So this one will be Pavel, Bruno, and Marco. This will be Sveta, Pavel, Anton, and Zlata. So you see that's a group of four. Then you've got Bruno, Roman, and Arika, Boris, Emilia, and Marin, Arika, Marin, and Katia. Right, well, in that case, I'm going with Pavel, Bruno, and Marco, because that's a really great uh, combination to have. You've got a cook, a brilliant scavenger, and a really fast runner. So I like working with that combination. So let's go day one. Fuck the war. You tell it, brick wall. So, welcome to our shelter. <laughs> it's very big for a shelter, I've got to be honest. It, you think hiding in a war, you think maybe hiding a cardboard box in an alleyway. You know, if you've got a mansion like this, you're doing reasonably well for yourself. <laughs> what the fuck? 
How long has the siege lasted? It's hard to say when every day is a struggle for survival. The city is crawling with snipers. Shelling is ordinary business almost every night. Phones don't work, there is a shortage of food and meds, and many people are left homeless. Bruno and Marco have always been good friends, so when the war broke out they decided to stick together. They met Pavel while scavenging for supplies. He used to be Perogan's star football player, now he's just another homeless victim of war. So they teamed up, hoping for the best. So I'm gonna click here and it will start off, and I'm gonna try and explain everything as I go, but I wanna get a good start on this, so I'm gonna make everybody go off. So you go do that, you go up here and start scavenging through that pile, and you scavenge through this one. You left click on the people to select them, and then you can left click on the things you want them to interact with for them to just walk over and do it, or you can right click and they'll run. So what have we found here? We've found some components, some water, clean water, some wood, and some electrical components. All wonderful stuff, click grab all, and it goes into the household inventory. So he's just broken down that door, he's going to scavenge that, and I'm going to get you to run up there and do that. You come down here and scavenge that desk. So we've found some more wood and some more components, fantastic. So down here in the bottom right you see we've got our cards of... I, I told you to come down here and scavenge. Uh, yeah, we've got cards for our people, so we've got Bruno, good cook, and we've got Pavel, who is... Ooh, components... Uh, parts, clean water and electrical parts, that's perfect, great. Uh, sorry, we've got Pavel, Bruno and Marco, and you can see, it tells you what they are, skilled scavenger, good cook, fast runner. Pavel is slightly wounded. Herbs, wonderful, useful, take those. And Marco is slightly sick, so that's a bit of a problem, I'd like to leave him to rest, but that's unfortunate, so we're going to get Bruno to run up there and do that. Pavel, you run over here and see about making us either a crowbar or a shovel and you Marco are going to run over here and scavenge that. So we're going to build a metal workshop first, that's what we need to make any tools. It allows us to make tools such as shovels for clearing gravel, crowbars for breaking doors and knives for self-defense. So it takes 10 out of 19 components and 5 out of 16 wood and it will take an hour to do so let's do that. We'll plop it right down here next to the carpenter's workshop. You go 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 scavenge. Find us more stuff, we're gonna need it. More components, more wood, fantastic, that's what we need, and more herbs. So up here we've got like the little bathroom that was, so we've got a medicine cabinet with all the meds and bandages that we find, you can pop open that door. And then up here we've got a fridge where we store all of our food, so you've got vegetables, um, alcohol, food, and tinned food. And we've got a little chair here, so he's finished building that, so let's see. We can make a crowbar, we have enough for that, 10 out of 20, and we have enough to make a shovel as well, fantastic, we'll make both. So we'll start off by making the crowbar, you do that, and then you scavenge through that desk, you keep digging through that by hand. The shovel will make that a lot easier, we've got some more herbs, a couple of lockpicks, which is fantastic, opening doors quietly and sneakily, and we've got some more, compo uh, some more parts and some more electrical parts, so we'll grab all of that, and then you start digging through that pile of rubble there. <coughs> hmm, excuse me. If only I had some kind of shovel. We're working on it. Right, so he's finished with the crowbar. Now let's get the shovel. You may be saying, why didn't you build the shovel first? Your people need it more. <laughs> yeah, well, hindsight 2020. 20. He's almost finished this anyway, so that's fine. He will get through that, and then we can search that wardrobe. And once the shovel is done, I'll get him to stop digging and then restart again. I hope we'll manage to keep it warm in here. We will. Somehow it's plus 22 degrees in a minute. So he's finished doing that. So you go and do that. You stop digging and then start again. It's much easier with my shovel, you don't say. So we found some food, some herbs, some parts, some water and some electrical goods. Yummy. And we go up here and you can see we have one food in the fridge. Despite the fact we have no power, we have a fridge that works. Don't question it. Just go with it. Game logic. So, let's get you over here. Ready to open this door once he's finished with that crowbar. And you need to get ready to do the same. Okay, you do your one first. And you start digging that pile. It's 1.30pm. We're halfway through the day. Once it gets to that little red line up here, it's the end of the day and it's time for the nighttime part of the game to start. 
So he's finished with crowbar, and he can start doing it by hand. Actually, no, just wait a second. Now you can do it. And you pop open that cabinet with the crowbar. You open that. <coughs> oh, diamonds, jewelry, clean water, and more food. Fantastic. Take it, take it, take it, take it all. Right, you run over here and let's build a bed. I want a bed before night time hits. Bandages, fantastic. And a book. That's always, always useful. So, build a bed. Build a bed. We can't. What are we making? We're missing components. What the hell? Oh, uh, okay. Right, you quickly get over here. And we need to search. We need more stuff. Right, Jimmy, open that door nice and quickly. Just rip it open. Do it, Bruno. Go on. Attack the door. Get in there. And then search the cabinet quickly, quickly, quickly. I would really very much like to find some components and build a bed before tonight. Please, can we do that? Come on. Components, 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 components. Damn. We found medication, though, which is always good. We might be in luck if we get to... The scav if we get out scavenging and we find that there's a garage nearby, we can trade medicine for tools and that might be worth it. We can get a hacksaw and other stuff like that. Is there really no way that we can make a bed? Damn it. We're missing... We are only missing three components. That really sucks. Uh, I could use the meds to heal these guys. Free books, nice, and more water and more herbs. That's great. Oh, I could use the herb. I could mm, herbs, maybe. No, no. You can't just eat the herbs. You need to actually have herbal medicine. So we've got one guy that's slightly sick and one guy that's slightly wounded. We could give the bandage to the slightly wounded guy, and we could get the meds to the slightly sick guy, and that would help them. But it's really best to save those for when you really need it. And it's the end of the day, so let's go scavenging. So, let's see. This is the second part. We've got all these little areas where we can actually go and scavenge, where we can choose to go. Here it gives you a brief description and then breakdown of the kinds of things that you'll find there. And then here are our different people. So, Bruno is a good cook and I'm going to have him guard. Marco, I'm going to have scavenge even though he's not well. And you are going to sleep on the floor for what? Mm -hmm. I could compromise. I mean, sleeping on the floor isn't going to do him much good anyway since he's sick, but it's better than nothing. So, yeah, Bruno's going to guard anyway, and we've still got 12 slots instead of 10. So, yeah, you will scavenge. We could just tell everyone to guard or sleep and keep everybody at home, but eh, I'd, I'd rather not. I want to get out there and get stuff. So we're going to go to the Shield Cottage first. This neighborhood recently got shelled and many houses are still burning. People were fleeing for their lives in a hurry, so we may find some useful stuff there without meeting anyone. Lots of food, huge amounts of materials, lots of meds, huge amounts of weapons and lots of parts. Fantastic. Let's do it. Let's go. We're going to take the crowbar and the shovel because there will probably be some obstacles to overcome. And we're just going to clear this place out. So, I'm gonna, I always leave the first scavenger spot untouched because it's great to have somewhere to dump stuff. The general idea is that if you leave the spot closest to the entrance, then you can go through the house or whatever it is, grab all the stuff you want, take it back to the first place, and then you can just you have less distance to run next time you come back. So we're going to fill up there and go back here. You see this little red ring here. This means there's noise, but there we go. It's just a rat. So we're going to dump all this stuff back in here. So this is that first spot. So we've got lots of components of wood already, which is fantastic. So we can click on this eye and just peek through the keyhole. And we can see it's empty. I, I already know there's nothing in here. There's never anything in here. No people anyway. So we're going to search in here. And we've got lots of food and sugar. Wonderful. We're going to leave it there for now. And what's in here? Probably going to be more sugar. Sugar and water as well. Wonderful. Let's check the bed. And we've got a pile here that we can dig with our shovel, which is wonderful. Medicine. Lots of medicine. We'll take that. Okay, let's run downstairs quickly. And there's a pile here that we're going to shovel. 
Nice and quick. Just look at that pile fall away. Absolutely wonderful. That's it, and now we can get to this cabinet. We'll just jam it open with the crowbar. And this bathtub probably going to be filled with useful stuff like wooden components. Let's see what we got. Bandages, cigarettes, oh, alcohol, and bullets. Wow. This is a good haul. And we're going to check here anyway. I know it's going to be wooden components. It's always wooden components. Oh, it's wood. Okay. Right, so let's quickly run up here. And we're going to do this a couple of times, just running back and forwards. Just emptying all of our stuff into this one place. Bum, 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 bum. And we're actually going to take those back again. I took those by mistake. So run back in here. I'm going to clear out all of these bits first so that we can search everywhere. And then we can take the shovel away and be done with it. So we'll dig through here nice and quick. I think I yeah, need the crowbar to open that door up there. So let's check this in the back garden. There might well be a gun here. Show me a gun! Gun parts. Eh, better than nothing. And more cigarettes. That is fantastic. Bruno will be happy that we are feeding his addiction. So dump everything back in here. And let's run upstairs quickly and open up that last locked door. Just look through the keyhole quickly. There's nothing in there. Just a wrap. And you can see we're only a third of the way through the night, so we're making good time here. So let's just check this one quickly, see what's in here. Lots of good stuff. Components, shell casings, and wood. Always nice. Alright, let's run through here quickly. Oh, something to search. One of the flyers dropped on the city. It reads, This is a zone of anti-terrorist operation. Persons remaining in the city will be treated as terrorist supporters. For you or for your own and your family's safety, leave Perogran immediately. The army grunt guarantees you a safe passage. Not many believe them after the atrocities they had committed. Well, you don't say. Okay, so well, no, move, run. I said move. I love this kind of water ripple effect just to show how much noise you're making. It's great. The aesthetics of this game are just fantastic. It's real. I, I think it's really worth the money. Uh, so we can dump those in there now, and we'll just go around and pile everything up that we want, and then we can go home. So we'll take the food and the sugar and water, and we'll take the sugar and the water from here. The fridge stays open because there's nothing in it. Bum bum bum. Quickly run down here and clear out this. Take all the wood. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, not enough. I usually I would go through the entire house and bring everything all the way back here, but I think we've got a good enough haul for now. I already know what I'm going to prioritise over anything else. So we're going to take the shovel and the crowbar just to get them back home in case we happen to need them. They can also be used by as weapons, so it's good to leave them at home for your people to use to defend the shelter with. We're going to take the... Uh, b -b 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 Let's take the food, the vegetables. Mm -hmm. We've already got meds at home, so I'm not too worried about that. We'll take. Mm. I, you know what? It's a good idea to only take full stacks. So we can go another day without eating. So we'll leave the one stack of food and the one stack of veg here, but we'll take the fourth stack of food. And we'll also take the cigarettes for Bruno. And we will also take what we want. We will take a couple of stacks of that and two, four, six, eight, ten stacks of wood. So that'll be that. Let's run to the exit and we'll go home. Pavel is back. Now we should have enough to build a bed so we can get people resting and sleeping and everything will be wonderful. Day two.
Hello, look at all this stuff. I wish I could bring so much every night. You will believe. The night was calm. Pavel has been searching for supplies and brought some interesting things. So, not a whole lot, but enough. That will get us started. And I think that that's a good enough place to end this first episode. So thank you for joining me today. If you want to support the uh, developers and the charity, then by all means, as I said before, you can find the game and the DLC on Steam. $14.99 is the price of this war of mine. And the DLC varies between 79p and 14.99, or your regional equivalent. And until next time, I hope you'll enjoy joining me for some more of this war of mine. See you later.